Hi, I'm Allison Edgity, a pediatric sleep and wellness coach and a mom of two. I love to help parents find solutions. This is How Long Till Bedtime. Hey there, Beth. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have been an avid sunscreen user for years after I had a few terrible sunburns as a child. But it wasn't until after having kids that I actually started to really think about what was in my sunscreen. And I started to learn that all sunscreens are not created equally. So I was so excited when Beth connected the two of us to chat today. And before we dive in on all of the questions I have about sunscreen, can you introduce yourself to everyone and tell us a little bit about what you do and your business? Yes, uh, thanks for inviting me today, Allison. As a mom of two um, grown-up adults now, I'm very interested in this topic because I've tried so many different sunscreens over the years, and now I have a lot more knowledge about them since I'm in the business of skincare. Um, I'll start by telling everyone a little bit about my business. I've been operating uh, my skin clinic now for 14 years, and um, I focus on helping people achieve their skincare goals. Um, I'm actually quite surprised the number of people that don't use sunscreen, so I, I usually actually start out by talking about sunscreen with most of my clients. That's awesome. All right, well, let's talk about sunscreen. I have a bazillion questions that I almost feel like I don't even know where to start. But one thing I'm always curious about is baby sunscreen versus kids sunscreen versus adult sunscreen. Because when you go and look in the aisles, you see all these very well labeled marked uh, sunscreens for different people. What is the difference between these? And should we actually be using something different on our baby versus our child versus ourselves? A very good question. Uh, so let me start out by saying that sunscreen has been approved as safe for babies that are older than six months. So it's not been approved for younger than six months. So talk to your pediatrician if you have a, a baby under six months. Um, for babies older than six months and kids, there, there are two mineral sunscreen ingredients, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, that are generally recognized as safe and effective. Um, so if we had to pick one universal sunscreen, um, whether we're a baby, a kid, an adult, I'd say we'd all be safest using baby or kid sunscreen. Um, they're usually and should be 100% mineral, chemical-free, tear-free, paraben-free, fragrance-free. Um, when you get into adult sunscreens, you, you usually don't uh, have as much zinc or titanium. They sometimes cut them with chemical sunscreens, so there's not as much of a white cast. Uh, there's a long list of the chemical sunscreens, and I'll get into some of those later. Um, they sometimes will add anti-aging antioxidants, alpha hydroxy acids, peptides, fragrances, and often the zinc is micronized or made into small particles, so it actually gets absorbed into the skin and doesn't leave a white cast. Um, and just FYI, the baby and the kids versions are actually more reef friendly, so if you're going to go on a beach trip, do the right thing, just pack the baby kid sunscreen, and maybe some SPF 50 swimwear to cover up more areas of the skin, and you'll you'll be doing the right thing for the, the ocean life and for the reefs. So generally speaking, you would actually say we are better off as adults using the kid and baby sunscreen? It's it's a very safe option as a fallback. You would you would only want to use an adult sunscreen or an anti-aging sunscreen if you're if you just want a makeup look, if you don't want to be so white, there's a lot of great tinted options. There's a lot of options out there that have anti-aging ingredients. And, and I just wouldn't use them on your kids or your babies. They're certainly safe for us. But if you're going to go into the beach, to the beach and swim and be in the ocean, I, I personally just use a kid's sunscreen because it's got a lot of zinc and titanium and really protects me from the sun. Okay. And so for the most part, you do think we should use the kid and baby sunscreen on the kids and babies. We should not be putting just regular adult sunscreen on them. Agree. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's good to know. 
So when choosing a sunscreen, what do you think are the key ingredients that we should be looking for? And could you tell us a little bit why I am a total nerd? If you could tell me why I'm looking for those ingredients, that would be awesome. Okay, great. Well, we, we just touched on that a little bit, but, but let's dive into it a little further uh, into the reason why mineral sunscreens, zinc oxide specifically, is so key. Um, it's so important to understand the different classifications of the UV rays that actually make it down to the earth's surface. So the UVB rays are often referred to as the burn rays, and those are the shorter wavelengths in the 290 to 320 nanometer range. Those affect the epidermis more, they cause burns and skin cancer. The UVA rays are often referred to as the aging rays. Um, Those are a little bit longer wavelength than the 320 to 400 nanometer range. They go deeper into the dermis. They actually penetrate the skin layers and they're the ones responsible for pigmentation, tanning, breakdown of collagen, wrinkles, and they, they also contribute to skin cancer. So back to the mineral sunscreen ingredients. Zinc oxide uh, is the only one that reflects all of the UVB rays away from the skin and all the UVA rays. Um, Titanium dioxide reflects the UVB rays and the shorter of the UVA rays. So it's not protecting you as much as zinc oxide is. Both of these ingredients work by creating a physical barrier on the skin that reflects the sun's rays away. Um, It's important to know that UVA rays can penetrate glass, i.e. your windshield. So it's important to wear a mineral sunscreen with zinc every day, even if you don't plan to go outside. Also, UVA rays remain constant throughout the year, while the UVB, the burn rays, are strongest in the summer. So this is news to me. So when I'm out walking, running, playing with my kids, I, in the winter months, I am not usually putting on sunscreen. So what you're telling me is the aging rays are still getting to me, even though I am not burning. Correct. And those are the ones that will result in hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, tanning, that can contribute too to, to skin cancer. So you also need to protect yourself in the winter. So I, I do would just make, say make sunscreen just a, a part of your everyday skincare routine. Okay. I was not doing that. <laughs> uh, okay, great. So on the flip side, what ingredients do you think can be often found in sunscreens that would be harmful? So harmful to me would mean cancer causing. Um, and there's one category of product that I would avoid due to the risk of exposure to benzene. And benzene is a cancer-causing compound. It's found in gasoline and cigarette smoke. And the category that's been found to contain benzene sometimes are the aerosol spray sunscreens. And those are pretty popular. You see people spraying their kids down with with the aerosols all the time. Aerosol spray sunscreens are made with propellants, and most propellants are formulated with hydrocarbons. Um, And also, a lot of people don't know this, but you have to mix the propellant in with the product, and a lot of those products are 60% propellant and only 40% product. And you almost have to use up half a can to even get enough product out to fully protect an adult's body. So if you reapply every two hours, you're using an entire can in two, two sessions. Um, there's been numerous recalls on aerosol sprays due to benzene, um, even, even Elta MD, one of the best well-known sunscreen manufacturers. Um, inhalation risks are too high with sprays. Um, e- even if it's a pump spray, it's possible to get zinc and titanium nanoparticles, you know, in, in the, in your lungs. So, Even if you're using a pump spray that's not aerosol, I would say spray it into the palm of your hand before you apply it to your kid's face or or your face. Um, It's also difficult with all sprays to get a thick enough layer on or an even distribution. So, and, And they're not good for the environment. So just in general, 
harmful sunscreens, I would just stay away from the aerosol sprays. And is there any difference between, I'm thinking the answer is no, but between spraying it directly on your child versus spraying it in your hand and then wiping it on your child? It sounds like no, the the bad ingredients are still there. You might inhale a little less of it, but but these hydrocarbons travel fast. So if if there's benzene in the air, you, you just you just don't want to be breathing that. Period. Um, it's going to the the heavier particles, zinc and titanium. You can spray those into your palm, and a lot less likely you'll inhale those in your lungs. But I would definitely say no to the aerosols. Well, I had mentioned to you before we got on, and I'll just tell the listeners because I don't think I will be the only one in this camp. But when I was telling my girls that we were having this conversation today, my oldest Addison said, oh, what are you guys talking about? And I said, oh, she's going to educate me on all things related to sunscreen. And her immediate response was, I hope she doesn't tell you that you can't use the spray can because I love the spray can. And I just laughed because I thought that's probably where we're headed. So I appreciate knowing this, though, because what I did tell her was if she tells me why I can't use the spray can, we can talk about it before we make a change. So I think my fellow nerdy child will appreciate that. (laughs) Are there other chemicals that we should look out for? Yes, there, there, you know, there's a long list of chemicals, sunscreen ingredients that actually absorbs the sun's rays uh, and converts those to heat, actually. Um, there's 12 chemical ingredients that are actually still under review by the FDA. Uh, in 2019, they deemed two as being not safe and effective, and that was the PABA. And PABA is actually a vitamin B10, which is actually used sometimes as a medication for for skin thickening issues or graying hair, but they can cause reactions at high doses. And then there's atrolamine salicylate, which we know most commonly as aspercream, which is a topical analgesic for temporary relief of pain, muscle strains and pains. Um, And it can cause rash uh, and irritation at high doses. Um, I'd have to say it takes some pretty large doses of those things to be harmful, but at least they're out of sunscreen formulations because they don't need to be there. Um, And then of the 12 that are currently under review, there there are two that I feel that are, you know, the least safe, and that would be oxybenzone and octanoxate. They're potentially endocrine system disruptors and they're not reef safe. Um, However, they're found in nearly 65% of all non-mineral sunscreens. So you really have to read your labels. Um, Oxybenzone and and octanoxate were recently banned in Key West and Hawaii due to their toxic effects on the marine ecosystems. Um, If you have to have a chemical sunscreen because you don't like that white cast, my my favorite of the 12 is the avobenzone. Um, It's the better one in the group. But the FDA admits they still need more safety data on, on all of these. Okay. Interesting. I'm wondering if in the show notes, I think what I will do is include some of these ingredients typed out because as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder how you spell that. So if I was listening, I would think, how does she spell those ingredients? So what I will do for everyone listening is make sure that we get some of these ingredients listed out in the show notes so you can see their spelling because that's immediately what I thought as she was chatting about the ingredients is I have no idea how to spell those. Yeah, they're they're long words, a lot of them. Awesome. So any other kind of thoughts on this chemical front? Uh, I actually... There, there's a few things I like to look for in, a, in sunscreens to avoid, um, and mostly for teenagers and adults that, that struggle with acne. These ingredients aren't harmful, but they're, they're not beneficial, um, and, and that's shea butter, petroleum, sweet almond oil, cocoa butter. All of these things can cause acne in teens and adults. And then that just means extra costs in the long term. You're having to go see your dermatologist, you know, maybe get on some antibiotics to treat the acne, Accutane. Uh, And sometimes I've even seen retinols, vitamin A derivatives in sunscreen. And those are really 
meant for nighttime use. They break down with UV exposure. I don't think they should be used in sunscreen. Um, and I feel the same way about niacinamide. It's a vitamin B3. It, it likes a pH of six. And it, we're getting into too much science here, but I, I like that ingredient at night, not, not in my sunscreen. Um, so to recap, because we covered a lot of things, I would say it, the most harmful, no aerosol sprays. Um, less harmful, maybe avoid the chemical sunscreens, especially those with oxybenzone and octanoxate. Read your labels if you're prone to acne. Look out for shea butter, petroleum, almond oil, cocoa butter, and then try to find a sunscreen that doesn't contain retinoids, retinal palmitate, retinol, any any retinoid variety, and or niacinamide. Awesome. Long list, sorry, but it's a lot of things. <laughs> um, my, we might circle back on this later, but as you're talking already, I'm thinking like many moms do and mom guilt is alive and well in all of us like oh my gosh I've used way too much aerosol spray oh gosh I haven't looked for all these ingredients and yeah I am a little curious what you tell people when if people have the reaction I do where I suddenly feel it's debilitating to hear like oh my gosh I've been doing it all wrong but I'm guessing you're gonna say just readjust change course if necessary and forge ahead with a little bit better product. Absolutely. There's, you know, that's all you can do. Readjust, uh, change your strategy, what you're looking for uh, in the ingredients list. And yep, off we go. And off you go. <laughs> so I have used the EWG app to help me choose sunscreens. I'm hoping that it has helped me avoid some of these things you've mentioned. But what are your thoughts on that app? So EWG, for those of you that don't know, stands for Environmental Working Group. Uh, it's a nonprofit activist group. There's a lot of scientists uh, in that group that work to reform broken chemical and ag safety laws. And they, they push industries to actually adopt new standards or, or good standards. Um, some people believe their tactics are scaremongering or misleading um, I, nonetheless, I think they're influential and, and there's a lot of good information on the site. So I would use it as a reference point. Um, you have to dive into the details, though. Um, and I'll give you an example. One of my favorite sunscreens is the ISDIN Actinica. Um, and the EWG site gives it a rating of 8. And a rating of 1 is the best and a rating of 10 is, is the worst. Um, and the reason it gets an eight is just because it has fragrance in it. And, and the fragrance alone gets an eight, but every other single ingredient in the sunscreen gets a two. Uh, so they, they give the sunscreen a rating of an eight. Um, and when I dive into the details, I'm like, oh, okay, well, there's very, very little fragrance in it. And it's, it's got a nice smell to it. I don't find it off-putting. And it just happens to be my favorite sunscreen for for various other reasons. Um, so there's lots of good things in it. So don't let the overall rating steer you away from a product, uh, I would say. But if you found a product that you like and it gets a good rating, then I, I think you've chosen a good product. Okay. And why? So I have two follow-up questions on that. So like in that example, the fragrance gets an eight. Do you know why? Are they just anti-fragrance? Is that fragrance not good for us, but you're saying it's a small dose? It, it really depends on what the fragrance is, is made out of. Um, could be phthalates in the fragrance, uh, but a lot of... I, so I you know, honestly don't know if they're grouping all fragrances in the same category or not, because they didn't... They did it, one, I don't know what the fragrance is in the ISDI and sunscreen because the box just says fragrance. And then they're not going into the detail on the EWG website. So I just know that it's very low on the list of ingredients. So it's got to be like less than 0.1% of the whole formulation. Um, so. And the other thing I'm a little surprised at is while I have noticed that the aerosol cans that I have used on my kids get a slightly lower grade than say the same brand in the lotion. 
but they are not totally knocking those aerosol cans on there, which is kind of interesting given everything that you've just told us. Yeah, so you you just have to be careful. And the companies that make the aerosol sprays, I mean, they're not intentionally putting benzene or I mean, they're they're trusting that their manufacturers are using propellants that are hydrocarbon free. And then, you know, all of a sudden you hear about all these recalls where they're finding benzene in, in the propellants. So even the manufacturers don't have total control of of the aerosols, apparently. So, yeah, just use the EWG site as, as a reference um, and just say no to aerosols. <laughs> the big takeaway of the day <laughs> the that we're all going to be crushed by. <laughs> um, so if we just want to make things easier for people and it's like, okay, well, just tell me what to use. Because sometimes I feel that way. If I'm talking with an expert, I'm like, just tell me what to do so I don't have to nerd out on this. What are the top three sunscreens that you recommend and why do you love them? Oh, okay. This, this is a little tougher. There's just so many good sunscreens out there, but Keep well, that's relieving. I feel good just hearing that. Uh, yeah, Let's so, start with that, everyone. There are many good there's sunscreens. There's so many good choices out there. And there's it, it's like every few months, there's a few more on, on the market. So keep in mind, I usually recommend sunscreens to teens through adults at my clinic. And, and still, my favorite ones are 100% mineral. So that's zinc oxide and titanium dioxide that don't cause acne. Um, so I still look for those other ingredients that don't cause acne. I tend to like the tinted ones because they're less white. Uh, three of my favorites are the Elta MD uh, UV40 Restore that's tinted. And I do like both the ISDIN Actinica and the Ageless. One's tinted and one's untinted. The untinted has uh, a photolase in it. It's an enzyme that recognizes and repairs UV-induced DNA damage. So I really like that one for my clients that have a lot of sun damage that we're trying to reverse. Uh, for anyone that asks me what to use on their body, so so a lot of these facial sunscreens get expensive. If you're going to use them on your whole body, then you, you've used a whole tube, right? So for a beach vacation for the body or for outdoor sports, I usually just recommend getting a large tube of the Banana Boat Kids. It's mineral sunscreen with zinc and titanium. It's 80-minute water resistance, PABA-free a great product for the price. Um, and there's others out there, Neutrogena. You just need to find the ones that are mineral. Kids' sunscreens are usually the safest. Um, and use that on your body or for a beach vacation. For everyday face, I mean, like the other than the Elta MD and the ISDIN, I mean, Juice Beauty, Bio, Biosense, Blue Lizard, Super Goop. Neutrogena, there's so many out there. You just have to read the labels. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. I've I've luckily I've used a few of these you're mentioning. So I feel good about that. Back in the day when I lived in Chicago, my dermatologist swore by blue lizard. That he was all in on blue lizard. So you feel good about that one? I do. Blue lizard you gotta watch though for the mineral oil. So they they uh sometimes that can cause acne. So just Read, read the label, and if you're not prone to acne, and it's possible now Blue Lizard has taken that out, um, just check the label before you buy any. They've got great sunscreens, but if you're prone to acne and it's got mineral oil in it, it's not going to be a good combination. Okay. Awesome. And then any specific thoughts on the kind of infants, toddlers, as far as kind of an all-over sunscreen or same camp as the rest? Yeah, kind of the same. I would say stick with a kid or a baby sunscreen, though, because they're all 100% mineral. Uh, the Banana Boat, I think that gets a three on the EWG site. Um, there's there's a lot of them, but you're going to be safe with a, a kid or baby approved mineral sunscreen. Okay. So the one just to, I have no idea what you're going to say about this, but the one that I've used the most in the last couple of years is the beauty counter sunscreen lotions. And I had gotten into them because they had a really good rating on the EWG site. And my girls have never gotten a sunburn wearing it. And I felt like it held up really well in the pool and in the ocean. And I just felt like I got long, I didn't have any accidental burning. 
Um, so I'm curious your thoughts on that sunscreen. And then a bunch of moms in my membership, when we pulled them about what sunscreen you use, a bunch mentioned Think Baby, which you have already mentioned today. So I'm curious if you, sounds like you do recommend Think Baby, which is will be well received <laughs> to the moms in my membership. And then I'm curious if you have thoughts on Beauty Counter. Um, yeah, so I actually looked these up uh, before our call and, and I like them all. The, the one that I'm least fond of is the Think Baby Stick. Um, it contains shea butter and cocoa butter. Uh, babies don't typically break out, but if you're using it on a kid and they, they're prone to acne, you just might want to avoid the Think Baby Stick. Um, otherwise, all of the products were, were mineral. They contain zinc, which I love. The Beauty Counter Counter Sun was 19% zinc. Um, the Counter Sun Daily Sheer was 15% zinc with some vitamin E, some good moisturizers. None of them caused acne. Um, and they all got EWG ratings of two. Um, and the fact that your girls didn't get a sunburn all summer, you and the other parents in your group have done their homework and are making some good choices out there. So, some days, some days we get it right. <laughs> so, a common complaint with many of the sunscreens, which you have kind of mentioned a little bit, is that they leave our kids or us, if we're using them, with that white tint. And I know it drives my husband crazy when I make him use the sunscreens that turn his face white. He's like, look at my face. It's so white. And, you know, it sounds like we just need to get over ourselves. I mean, that's kind of what I've gathered so far. But are there any sunscreens that you recommend that don't have it or we should just get over it? Uh, well, quite quite simply, yes. Uh, you're, it, it's hard to get away from the white cast unless you go with a tinted version. Um, micronized zinc, which is more sheer, can even leave a white cast. Um, one of it, you know, it's tough. You're you're sometimes it's hard to get your kids or a husband to put on a tinted sunscreen, right? But but for us, it's a little easier. Um, with my favorite being the Elta MD UV forty Restore. That's tinted. 100% mineral. So you put it on and, and you barely see it. So, but yeah, we, we've got to get over ourselves because if we've got that white cast, we, we know we're protected and we can't be vain. And even it's interesting because in the last, I don't know, six to eight weeks, I've been at some events, even Memorial Day weekend, and there have been some of the husbands who have scars on their face, scars on their arm. And it's like, what happened? Melanoma. And my husband came home from this Memorial Day party and he said, I, I got to go get a skin check. And he's Italian and he's fairly dark skinned. And usually the dermatologist is like, you're good. You don't have to come in all the time like your wife. I have to go in there every six months. But he, I felt like he learned something over the last month or so seeing these men who have had melanoma taken off of their bodies and have very large scars from it. Uh, so it's a real, it's a real thing and it's, it's happening. I don't know what the stats are, but I know it's kind of this cancer that's seen. I know it's picking up speed that people are, t are picking up steam. People are talking about it, but I'm personally knowing more and more people who've been affected by skin cancer. Yeah. Melanoma is, is serious. Um, and it, it, it's evasive too. Once, once you have a melanoma removed, um, it can, you know, may not appear again or may not show up for years and it can come back in, in, in many other forms. It's lung cancer, you know, all kinds of other types of cancer. So melanoma is very serious. You definitely want to get over yourself, wear some, wear some zinc. Don't worry about the white, just know that you're protecting yourself. Right. So let's talk about SPF levels, because that's another place I often get stumped when I'm shopping for a sunscreen. And what is the ideal SPF? And is there a real difference between, say, a 30 SPF or you see 70 or maybe even higher SPFs out there? What should we know about that? Good question. Uh, an SPF of 30 protects against 97% of those UVB burn rays. It, whereas an SPF of 50 protects you against 98% of the UVB rays. So really anything beyond a 50 makes very little difference in terms of risk of sun damage. Um, and it's more or less used as a marketing kind of gimmick. They go higher and higher, but 
they're actually looking into kind of capping that number at 50 uh, because it really doesn't make much of a difference above 50. Um, and no sunscreen offers you 100% protection from UVB rays. So, so just a 50, a 30 even, or 50 or higher, you know, you're getting about the same. But definitely you need a 30. An SPF of 15, on the other hand, only protects you against 93% of UVB, UVB, so there is room for improvement. Um, and remember that zinc oxide is the only ingredient that protects you from all of the UVA rays. I think this is going to bring the moms on board to turning white because... <laughs> We can help with our aging. We that Every time we look same. at our white faces, we could say, well, at least we won't get as wrinkly. Yeah, or your, tint, or your tinted face. So That's right. That's right. So with my girls, I typically lotion them up in the morning come summer, although now I will rethink that for other times throughout the year. And then we would use that spray lotion for touch-ups. And so we've talked about the spray lotion in general. But what are your thoughts on kind of the reapplying of lotion throughout the day. Um, like I said, my kids have not really burned and I'm not an avid, like you've mentioned, like 80 minutes waterproof. I'm going to be real honest here. I like to just own how I behave as a parent. I am not getting my kids out of the pool or bringing them in the house every 80 minutes to reapply this sunscreen. So realistically, you can tell me if I'm doing it all wrong, but like, what do we really need to know about reapplying sunscreen? I'll be realistic as well. Um, I like the 80 minute water resistant sunscreens because they do last for a long time. And, and sometimes even when my kids were little, I, I, after a bath and bedtime, I'd be tucking them in and, and they're still kind of white and there's no burn on them. So I'm like, yay, I've done my job, right? The 80 worked all day long. And sometimes you know, I'll put it in their part on the top of their heads. And that kind of lasted all week sometimes while we were at the beach, if they're not vigorously shampooing it out. So, um, but disclaimer, you know, you have to read the label. And if it says, you know, you should follow the instructions, but if you find a sunscreen that literally is lasting longer, you'll, you'll learn when you need to reapply. And the fact that your kids don't have a sunburn is, you know, your first indication that you can go a little bit longer. I did screw up uh, recently on vacation and bought, which I do want to ask about, but I bought a sunscreen in the grocery store and it had a decent rating and that's kind of what I was looking for and I was in a hurry and it was not waterproof. And they did not get a terrible burn, but I, I mean, I have bragged that my children have not really been burned because I had some traumatizing sunburns as a child and they did come out of this pool in Florida. And I took one look at their faces and I was like, oh my gosh, where's that bottle? And sure enough, it was not marked waterproof. And I was like, oh, it just washed right off. I'm sure they hopped in that pool and it was over, but I've had good success. So sounds like you're saying, generally speaking, there's a little trial and error of learning how often we need to reapply, but the benefit of the, these waterproof mineral sunscreens is that they stay on yep. pretty well. It's, yes, they're great. Cool. So a lot of parents are sending their kids to camp this summer, and I have many comments on the camp front. And I, too, have been told this where it's like every day send your child with sunscreen and bug spray. I had not really thought much of it, but several parents asked, what do we think about the bug spray getting applied kind of around the same time that sunscreen is getting applied? Do we worry that the bug spray is going to mess up the sunscreen and or do you know of any good combo sunscreen bug spray so our kids don't have to get twice as annoyed with us when we're applying all the things? As a rule of thumb, I would say just keep those two things separate. Um, I don't know of a good product that combines both of them, but I've honestly not looked into that because there's so many good products that are sunscreens and or bug sprays. And they don't always have to be applied at the same time. Um, bug sprays usually come in aerosol cans or pumps. So, you know, you, they, they're usually not lotions. So I like the lotion for the sunscreen and maybe a pump spray for, for the bug spray. Um, and I like bug spray pump sprays because you can 
you can spray your clothes and your shoes. And I, I tend to like to get more of the bug spray on my clothing than my skin, even though the EWG site, it appears that DEET up to 30% and P-carotin up to 20% are safe and effective, uh, with DEET being the best and effective ingredient against tick bites. And we've got lots of ticks in Virginia. So, um, you know, there's some good bug sprays at CVS. They've got an insect repellent called the Woodland Trails that comes in a 15% and a 30% DEET. And the off-brand uh, Family Care has a 7% DEET. I use that a lot for my evening walks. I'll just spray it on my clothes and shoes before I take a walk to keep the bugs away. I mean, the, the tick thing is ridiculous this year. And I'm really disappointed because we had a really uh, cold January, unusually cold. And I literally thought to myself, well, I understand I have no power and it's been a week and this is really a bummer. However, die little ticks, die little ticks. That's what I was thinking. And yet the talk at the pool and when I'm out with other parents is, oh my gosh, how many ticks have you already pulled off your kids this year? And it's not great. I mean, that that meat allergy from the ticks is rising rapidly and the Lyme, I know so many now kind of high schoolers and young people who are having a lot of health struggles and they're thinking it's related to Lyme disease. And so that's interesting on the DEET front because I've always been under this assumption, somehow it was pushed to me, I'm sure with some marketing thing, that DEET is bad and and that we need to avoid DEET. But then these kind of holistic sunscreens are not keeping the ticks off. So that's good to know on on the DEET front. And I appreciate you mentioning a couple of brands because I think I'm going to, I have avoided insect repellent other than for camp, but I think I'm about to whip it back out because <laughs> I've had ticks on myself. Uh, Ainsley, my, my younger daughter, has pulled a few ticks off of herself um, already this year, and I feel like we're just getting started. Yes, we are. I, I like you, hope January would freeze them all, but I've already found ticks on myself. I do a lot of yard work. And I even wear rubber boots outside, and somehow they still manage to get on me. Um, the key is catching them early, um, and then... I just spray your clothes. If you're going to be outside, just get your DEET spray, not higher than 30%. Even if it's just the family care off at 7%, just spray your bottom of your pants, legs, your shoes, um, kids' clothes for camp, uh, anything you can do because you don't want Lyme disease. I know. I like the idea of spraying the clothes. I hadn't thought about that. So back to our lotion and uh, skincare. If our children end up getting a sunburn, how do you recommend that we treat it? Well, I'm not a pediatrician, but based on personal experience, the best things that you can do are get, try to get the skin cooler. So cold compresses, a cool shower, apply aloe vera gel. Um, if you have blisters that are breaking, um, an oxygen cream emulsion such as Cutagenics or uh, Elta MD makes a wound dressing gel that's got an antibacterial in it you can use that's pretty soothing. Um, don't break blisters that are intact. Uh, drink plenty of water to prevent dehydration. And if needed, you know, you can give your kid an over-the-counter pain reliever or anti-itch drug, even the topical Benadryl gel uh, helps if they develop itching. Um, but those are ways to treat sunburns. They do happen once in a while. I know, even to the best of us with the best intentions. <laughs> so speaking of best intentions, I think we often have the best laid plans and then life happens. And, you know, I already mentioned that I went to Florida and I actually had brought our typical sunscreen with us and then ran out because we were there for like 10 days. And it's amazing how quickly a brand new fresh bottle of sunscreen can disappear. And so I had to run to the grocery store to buy more sunscreen. And I was scanning with that EWG app like crazy, trying to find one in a rush. And I had a really hard time finding one that, that appeared to be clean and effective. Now I'm kind of curious which ingredients were throwing them off because I had not really thought about that. But when when we're in that situation and we're in a pinch and we kind of have our go-to sunscreen, but then we're suddenly at the grocery store or the drugstore and they don't have that product. I feel like a lot of these products we have to order um, online. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend as a backup that is carried in the store? So you mentioned banana boat. So I'm 
I'm guessing we could find the one you mentioned in most stores. It, it's you. It's difficult. Um, look for it. There, Banana Boat makes so many sunscreens that you can't just buy a Banana Boat. You need to look for Banana Boat Kids. That's 100% mineral. Uh, same with Neutrogena. Neutrogena has a pure and free baby sunscreen. That's great. You just need to find it. Um, it seems like at the at the store, you've got to get through all the aerosol spray cans first because there's so many of those. And then you've got to dive into where's where's the baby sunscreen? Where's the kid sunscreen? Where's that 100 percent mineral? And and you can find it. You're probably better to go to a CVS or a drugstore versus a Kroger um, or a grocery store. You, you tend to find a little bit better ones at, at the drugstores. Um that's good to know. Yeah. And so they will say on there, right, 100% mineral base, that will be on the, the bottle? It, it should. And you should look for those because then you, you can still flip it over and read the, the, the ingredients, the sunscreen ingredients on the back. And it should say titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. Make sure that zinc oxide is part of the formula. But if you turn it over and it's got avobenzoin, octocrylene, octanoxate, homosalate, all the chemicals in it, it, there is no way legally it should say mineral on the front because those are not mineral sunscreen ingredients. So just look at the front, but then turn it over for verification and and read the label on the back. That's helpful. And then, you know, if we're in a real pinch and going to the store isn't an option and wherever you are, someone's like, oh, here, I have the sunscreen, just use it. I assume in those situations, using what we have is better than nothing. Yes, it's better to wear any type of sunscreen than none at all, or avoid the sun altogether. If you have time to get in the car and take a trip to the to CVS somewhere, for instance, um, and I just personally wouldn't use an aerosol spray if if that's the only thing I had. I just would avoid the sun. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to go clean out my cabinet. Um, one of the moms in the membership wanted me to ask you if sunscreens really do expire or lose efficacy. And I love this question because back when my girls were at daycare, periodically they'd suddenly send home this half used bottle of sunscreen and they would say it's expired. And so it can no longer be used, which I understand they have certain protocols, but it's a great question. So when that happens, do we need to trash our expired sunscreens? Because I feel like maybe their dates are usually like 12 months about from where you get them. Or what are your thoughts on that? Uh, so the FDA, well, first off, I'm using my sunscreen so often that that I'm not, I'm not reaching the expiration date usually, but the FDA usually deems the product ineffective three years after it's made. Um, The chemicals and the chemical sunscreens can oxidize and the zinc and the mineral ones can lose potency. Um, So if yours is just expired and you see no indications that it's gone bad, meaning the color is good, the consistency is good, the odor is good, you might be able to get, you know, another six months out of it until it's time to get a new one. But rule of thumb, if it's expired, toss it. It's not worth the risk of, of sunburn and I get why the daycares are are sending them back home because there's an expiration date on them for a reason. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, because sometimes in some industries or different products, people say like, "Oh, that's totally bogus. It doesn't really expire." They just do that to sell you more product. So I think that's that's helpful to know that mm-hmm. things can change. Uh, another mom was curious about her infant putting his hands and his arm in his mouth, you know, doing the constant arm sucking or hand sucking. And she was curious how concerned she should be about that as she's putting sunscreen on him each day. So from what I've read, sunscreens are minimally toxic. So if your child accidentally ingests too much, uh, give them sips of water and watch for vomiting or diarrhea. Um, And, Call Poison Control if there's more than one episode. Um, There's the 1-800-222-1222 Poison Control line. Um, And if she just in general is worried or thinks her kid's, you know, getting too much off their arm, possibly look at an SPF 50 
long sleeve swim shirt. I mean, sometimes it's hard to keep your children or babies in, in these SPF clothes. Um, they can sometimes be hot, but if you're in the water where it's cooler, uh, maybe that'll keep the child from, from sucking the sunscreen off the arm. Oh, that's a good idea. I like get, that get idea. Get them out of that habit, but they're, they're minimally toxic. So, you know, they probably would have to ingest a whole lot to have it be harmful. Yeah. Interesting. So this is probably not something that the average parent is thinking about, but I am very low in vitamin D, as are a lot of people, although I think many people do not know that they are low in vitamin D. In addition to supplementing with vitamin D, uh, I have been told that I should spend some time outside each day without sunscreen to try to get that vitamin D. And as I was kind of thinking of questions to ask you, I kind of want to follow up on that advice I had received. And I'm curious does sunscreen block vitamin D? And do you think if you if it does, do you think our kids should spend short periods of time in the sun without sunscreen? What, if anything, do you know about this? It's a, it's a good question. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there still that, that they think they need to go outside unprotected to increase their vitamin D levels. Um, but that's just not the case. Um, and if you're really fair skinned, like I am, you, you literally can burn in 15 minutes. Um, so it, it's just not worth the risk of a sunburn. <clears throat> I think everybody should use sunscreen when, when playing outdoors or e- even working indoors, uh, no matter how short the duration. The risk of skin cancer is too great to skip the sunblock. And there are other ways to obtain D through diet, salmon, tuna, swordfish, eggs, fortified milk, orange juice, yogurts. Um, it, and if those don't appeal to you, if the food options are of no interest, uh, there's vitamin D supplements. Um, I take vitamin D supplements. Obviously, i usually always covered in sunscreen and my D levels were low, um, but they're, they're normalized now. So. Yeah, I also supplement uh, with a tremendous amount of vitamin D. So you think that it does the sunscreen does block the vitamin D, but not worth the risk to get our vitamin D somewhere else. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yes. The sunscreen will block the, the, the D from, okay. from forming. Yes. Got it. Okay. One last question for the moms specifically. I would love to know your thoughts on the combination foundation with SPF protection. Are those a solid option or... Are those two things that we want separate? I know we always want something on our face, but is it okay to combine those two products, our foundation with a found, you know, just using one foundation that has SPF in it? Yes. So it's possible. Most makeups, though, don't offer enough protection. A lot of them are like SPF 15, for instance, or, or 20, and they have chemical sunscreen ingredients in them versus the physical mineral ingredients. Because zinc, zinc is often difficult to use in a makeup because of its white cast. Um, so I, I would tend to say, try to think of a, a makeup as a tinted mineral sunscreen. Now it's almost like these new products, these BB creams, CC creams are, are popping up all, all the time now. And you can actually use those tinted mineral sunscreens as makeup. Um, that, that said, I still have makeup that I like uh, that does not contain SPF, and I use it in, in two different ways. So I'll, I'll sometimes I'll mix my sunscreens, a tinted and untinted, and if I need to get a perfect color, I'll add a drop of my liquid foundation to that mix and apply it so that my SPF is a perfect color for my skin. Just like for t- today, for example, I have mixed my makeup in with my two ISDI and sunscreens to come up with the perfect color. Obviously, if you're going out at nighttime or for an event, you can just wear your makeup that doesn't have sunscreen in it. Um, I just, like I said, I don't like the makeups that have the chemical ingredients in them. So if you have a makeup that's SPF, just make sure that it's zinc based or just move to a tinted mineral sunscreen and use that as a makeup or a makeup base underneath. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look at mine and see if it is zinc based. I could see why they wouldn't want to use that if it has the white factor 
yes, it's it's difficult to make the colors with that much white in it. Interesting. Well, Bev, this has been so helpful and I know my fellow uh, moms who like to geek out and understand exactly why we should or should not use something are going to find this really interesting. Is there anything that we didn't touch on today that you think parents should know about sunscreen or just caring for our children's skin this summer? Yeah, don't don't forget about the mini SPF uh, clothing options. Swim clothes that have SPF of 50, like Kula Bar, um, hats, sunglasses, um, and always think about the environment. The less sunscreen that you're using, it's better for the plumbing systems, the waterways, because let's face it, even, even when you shower and wash off all these sunscreens, they eventually end up in a, in a water system, right? So if the more clothes you have on, the less sunscreen you'll use, um, and if you're taking extra steps to avoid chemicals, you know, toss that sunscreen in a cooler on a hot day because we often don't think of the the chemicals that are in the bottle that hold the sunscreen. So if those are left in a hot car, for instance, the excessive heat, these chemicals leach into the, the product and there's phthalates in those that can contaminate the product. So just be careful about heat, throw your sunscreen in the cooler, and then don't forget your lips and eyelids. There's a, Tizo makes a great SPF lip balm and SkinCeuticals makes a great SPF for eyes and eyelids. Um, Cause that's skin that's pretty delicate and it hurts when you get burned there as well. That's really helpful info. And I do totally keep a sunscreen in my car for the like, oh, I'm in a pinch. I forgot sunscreen. Uh, but it's funny you say that because I'm also that person who doesn't store my food in plastic and do all of that. And I can't even believe I didn't think about the fact that in my hot car, that sunscreen is going to be baking in that plastic bottle. So uh, appreciate that extra tip. Well, Bev, thank you so much for your time today. Can you please tell everyone how they can find you? Uh, yes, thanks, Allison. Um, they can find me on my website, uh, bevsitters.com, uh, or on Instagram or Facebook. It's Bev Sitters Skincare. Uh, there's a link to ask Bev uh, if you have any questions or want to send me an email. You can do that, that through the website. That's awesome. And we'll be sure to link to your website and to your Instagram account uh, in the show notes. And thanks again, Bev. And I hope you have a wonderful summer. You as well, Allison. Thanks for having me.